wake up everybody no more sleeping in bed no more back to thinking time for thinking ahead well officer Dolores Sharp is a 19 year veteran of the Nassau County Police Department and in those 19 years she's not only served with distinction but she served doing special types of tasks including applicant investigation making sure that those individuals that cross the threshold of Nassau County Police Department are the right people to be on the job unfortunately the two people that she came in contact with didn't necessarily go through that process they came from outside from what we understand the, the county of Nassau and that entire process. On the day after Thanksgiving, this just past Friday, Officer Sharp was off duty, going about her duties, going shopping. She was shopping in the West Hempstead community, going to, believe it or not, a discount dollar store. Not that our police in Nassau County have to do that, but she was looking for something very particular. She was looking for weather stripping. As she was going into the parking lot, a space became available and she was about to pull into the space and an officer in a marked radio motor patrol car of Nassau County started to screech up on her, yell at her using all types of curse words and uh, making comments to her uh, that were, I can't repeat them on the air. She pulled into the, the spot proceeded to go about her business, and then this officer, in a very stalking-like manner, rolled up on her as she was about to enter the store and made comments to her that would make a sailor's hair turn. She said, Officer, I don't know what the problem is. I am a member of the service. She showed her badge and ID, and the response to the badge and the ID was, I don't care who the F you think you are, you are a moron. She looked at him and said, I'm sorry, I didn't know I was creating any problem. The officer then said, you were uh, interrupting my investigation, you blocked my view. She apologized and then offered the officer help. She said, how can I help you? I'm a member of the service. He made other comments to her, additional comments, things that you would not make comments to anybody in the public but he used words that are just totally inappropriate for us to talk about here again. She looked at him, she disregarded him and went into the store. As she went into the store and did her shopping, she came out about five to seven minutes later, went to her car. As she went to her car, one of the things that was clear was that she just wanted to go about her way. As she attempted to go about her way and pull out of the spot, this officer, Officer Volpe, Charles Volpe, been on the force from 2004, pulled up head to head with uh, Officer Sharp, who was then at that point off duty in her civilian car, and began to yell at her and scream at her using curse words and yelling, get the F out of the car. She said, no, I am not getting out of this car. If you have a problem, call a supervisor. After several minutes, Officer Sharp was able to leave the parking lot and drove approximately two blocks. At the two block point, she noticed that there was an officer behind her with lights and sirens going. She pulled over and at that point, as he was using, again, inappropriate language, she asked, what is your problem? What is the, what is the concern here? And at that particular time is when Officer Volpe not only disrespected her, but when she said, I'm not dealing with you anymore. I am calling. I'm telling you to get a supervisor here. From what I, we understand, no supervisor was called at that time. Another officer showed up. That officer is Officer Gladitz. He's mentioned in the papers as well. When he showed up, he spoke to Officer Volpe, and rather than speak to Officer Sharp in a civil manner as a member of the service, he began to disrespect her as well. Part of the disrespect included him demanding that she show the ID and how did she he know that she was a real officer. When she showed her ID, she took it out. It was on a chain on her hand. He snatched it. It was snatched out of her hand so much so that it ripped from the chain. And they took it away. After several period uh, minutes, Officer uh, Gladitz made comments to her. She
she decided that she was not going to talk to him until a supervisor came. Officer Gladys then put his hands on this woman. He grabbed her by her shoulders, slammed her and pushed her, and she said, what are you doing? When he did that, she made no actions to respond in any way physically and only made comments to this officer that his actions were totally inappropriate and that a supervisor should be on the scene. One of the things that is very clear in this case is that these officers, whatever their background was, treated Officer Sharp in a way that no one, civilian, no less a member of the Nassau County Police Department should be treated. And the only reason that they felt that they could feel to, to disrespect her that was clear was a total disdain for her from the very beginning that had nothing to do with what she had done. The real issue here in this case is for these officers and for the Nassau County Police Department is why. What happened after that, eventually um, Officer Gladitz um, uh, took Officer Sharp, pushed her, and at that point told her to take her hands out of her pocket, not uh, calmly by the way, and when she did he accused her of trying to injure him with the chain that was on her hand, that, he, that she was attempting to try and assault him. She was placed under arrest at that time, violently turned around, handcuffed, and then verbally abused again. When a sergeant came to the scene, the sergeant released her from the handcuffs and asked what was going on, and she asked, am I free to go? He was, she was told that she was not. She was then arrested, taken to the precinct, charged with resisting arrest. And I will tell you that in this situation, one of the things that's the most absurd about this case is that we believe that these officers want to ignore the fact that there was an, a, a, a uh, interaction before this alleged traffic stop. And when I asked the members of the, of, of the uh, press to look into this, ask tough questions about whether or not there was any interaction or discussion between Officer Volpe and Officer Sharp prior to them taking her into custody. She was held for several hours at the 4th Precinct and released with a desk appearance ticket, one of which is in your package um, uh, and for your review, for your careful review, given the fact that this took place the day after Thanksgiving, the 29th. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Officer Dolores Sharp to read a prepared statement. I'm telling you that she will not be answering questions. I come before you this morning as a victim, a victim of unbridled abuse of authority that makes me clear that if it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone. It is for this reason that I stand before you. For most of my adult life as a law enforcement officer, I have worked hard to ensure that people are respected, treated fairly, and not abused. I have been terribly disappointed by the Nassau County Police Department, to whom I have dedicated two decades of my work life. The abuse and mistreatment to which I was subjected at the hands of members of the Nassau County Police the day after Thanksgiving illustrates that there is something seriously wrong. I have been wrongfully charged and falsely arrested requiring me to defend against allegations that are based on prejudice coming from my own police force. I now know that something must change. I want to be restored back to my job. I want my pay restored and I want these charges dropped. Most of all, I want to help restore the public's confidence in law enforcement. This time, I'm going to ask, there are several organizations that are here in support uh, of Officer Sharp. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Dennis Jones from the Law Enforcement Alliance. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Jones from the Law Enforcement Alliance, which operates in uh, New York State. Uh, we're very concerned about this situation, and uh, we believe that uh, Police Officer Sharp 
while she was off duty uh, and shopping, was acting just as a, a normal citizen. And we're very concerned as to what impression uh, relationship that would be to, uh, to the community when they see law enforcement officers doing this to their own. Um, we're offering a reward for $500 to anyone who may have videotaped this incident, anyone who may have some knowledge about this incident who may have been in the parking lot or may have been out on the street when it took place. And we'd like that person to come forward, or any of those people to come forward. And again, we're offering a $500 reward so that we can get down to the bottom of this. Thank you. And from uh, the Blacks and Law Enforcement of America, Long Island chapter, Mr. Darren Green. The thing that comes to mind is fundamental reform. Fundamental reform. There is a clear ethical violation, a moral violation that has happened that has taken place here. These actions that were taken by the officers are completely unacceptable for it to happen and for it to have taken place right here in Nassau County and as a member of the department to be treated in such ways is outrageous. It upsets me. And not only does it upset me, it, it's one of those things that we have now reached out to our national chapter, which is down in D.C., and the national chapter has reached back to us and said we're looking for national oversight for there to be some reform within Nassau County Police Department as to how officers are treating not only their, their own officers, but how they're treating the general public. Because the interactions and the amount of abusive language that was used to deal with such a person for such a small traffic stop is something that cannot be tolerated. If we are here as law enforcement officials, as police officers sworn to protect and serve, if we are no longer protecting and serving, even on a simple traffic stop, and it escalates and elevates to a level of abuse that Ms. Sharp was subjected to, we need fundamental reform. Fundamental reform. And that's what we're going to be looking at too, and that's what our national chapter is going to be looking at, looking at and looking into that we can be able to get some resolutions and some reform so that this does not happen to not only another member of Nassau County Police Department, but to any other person or civilian should not be treated in such a fashion for a routine traffic stop. Thank you. Thank you. To the commissioner and to Mr. Mangano, this letter was a clear offer to sit down and talk and not have to have all the flashing going on that's going on in this room right now. It was an offer to try and avoid the ugly reality that this African American woman was treated this way for no other reason but some disdain that the officers had for her. That offer has been rebuffed. We have gotten no response from the commissioner. We've gotten no response from Mr. Mangano and while all these statements about how important it was to make sure that the African-American and Hispanic communities were treated fairly and properly, their refusal to even enter into discussion shows that everything that they said up until this point is disingenuous. Officer Sharp was given a desk appearance ticket. That desk appearance ticket has not been arraigned yet. They had every right and possibility to simply just say, we made a terrible error, Let's pull that back. But instead, what they want to do is run this woman through the series of going through court appearances after court appearances. And I'm telling you, everybody in this room, and Nassau County in particular, that she does not stand alone. She stands with people side by side with her that are not going to allow a railroading to take place. And they're not going to allow, in this situation, a set of facts to be manufactured when indeed the reality is that the officers, Mr. Volpe and Mr. Gladitz, need to have charges brought against them. They need to be marked off the payroll right now, even though they made more than six figures, particular officer Volpe, in the past couple of years. And third, and more importantly, they need to conduct an investigation within their own internal affairs department 
on why in this situation this officer, Officer Sharp, was summarily, and I say summarily, summarily knocked off the payroll, suspended with no pay, without a single hearing, without a single hearing. And these officers violated all the types of rules and regulations, and I'm telling you, it's going to come out in the wash. But they had their chance.